A Beautiful Invasion, a Lionfish Documentary. Southwest Florida is notorious for its sandy beaches and subtropical climate, but recently there has been an intrusion in this serene environment, the lionfish. While they are beautiful tropical fish originating in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, the increase in lionfish in captivity has led to an increased amount of lionfish being released into the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the Atlantic Ocean, causing an invasion of fish that have no natural predators in their newly acquired environments. In their native waters, lionfish average 12 to 15 inches in length. However, in the invaded waters, their lengths range from 16 to 22 inches. The life expectancy of a lionfish ranges from 10 to 15 years. While lionfish are mesmerizing creatures, their beauty is de deceiving. In fact, they have venomous dorsal spines along with anal spines and pelvic spines. These fish have a distinctive brown or maroon color in white stripes or bands covering the head and body. Above their eyes and below their mouth are fleshy whiskers. Lionfish are venomous with their venom, venom concentrated in their spines. This venom is used as a defensive mechanism. A sting from a lionfish is extremely painful to humans and can cause nausea and breathing difficulties, but is rarely fatal. Despite being prized for their beauty for aqu aquarium trade, their in invasion is becoming more of a problem. Many people are unaware of the invasion dilemma lionfish are causing, and some people do not realize the effect it has on the local en environment. In order to obtain a public opinion, we asked people at the Naples Pier their opinion on the issue. Hi, I'm Rachel Lieberg, and we're here at the Naples Pier. Do you know what a lionfish is? I have no idea. Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> I do not know what a lionfish is. <laughs> okay. Are you aware of the lionfish invasion in South of Florida? <laughs> no, I am. I'm not aware of the invasion of lionfish. <laughs> I am not aware of the invasion. Jonathan, are you aware of the invasion? No. Since 1985, the lionfish population has dramatically increased. While it is thought to have started in Miami when a home aquarium lionfish was released, the epicenter of the dilemma is unknown. By 2000, lionfish have established themselves from Miami to North Carolina and quickly populated the region, making their way into New England. In 2004, sightings were reported in the Caribbean and eventually made their way to the west coast of Florida in Central America. Once lionfish had established themselves in each of these areas, their populations exploded, causing the massive invasion. Because the invasion of lionfish has become a major problem in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic coast, various groups and organizations have taken matters into their own hands. Organizations such as USGS, Reef, Sea Grant Florida, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration have taken efforts to raise awareness of this problem. These organizations have extensive information on what actions people can take to help address the issue. Local groups have also taken efforts to alleviate the problem through lionfish spearfishing tournaments and derbies. In Naples, Florida, the Naples Spearfishing League has held multiple derbies to lessen the issue. To obtain a different perspective of the lionfish invasion, we interviewed Bill Diatuno from the Naples Spearfishing League and Scuba Adventures. What steps right. did you take to get the lionfish ban lifted? What I had to do was I just wrote a petition and went on the Facebook page, Naples Spearfishing League, mm -hmm. and um, just got like 500 signatures. And then I had to go to the commissioners, and you have if you want to get on there, like tw twice a month or once a month, they have a big meeting there. Mm -hmm. If you want to get on their agenda, you have to submit your proposal, and then they accepted it, and I went down there, talked to them. They voted to lift it, and then it went to the state to get lifted because it was on the books for so long. It was before FWC was even created, so it had to be lifted through the state. But it took uh, like six months. It started in February, and it got lifted in July. So. Since this invasion has become a state issue, government organizations have implemented legislation and plans of action to decrease the number of lionfish. The National Park Service created a lionfish response plan in 2012 to have, quote, a systematic approach to managing impacts from the lionfish and invasive species in units of the national park system, end quote. In addition, Florida has had a ban on spearfishing, but as of August 1st, 2014, it was lifted. This was lifted in order to address the invasion of lionfish all along the Florida coast. The changes, quote, prohibited the importation of lionfish, the harvest of lionfish when diving with a rebreather, and allowed participants in approved tournaments and other organized events to spear lionfish or invasive species in areas where spearfishing is not allowed." End quote. These invasive fish, local organizations and groups have taken action to advocate 
for solutions to the issue and make the information more readily available. I'm Alyssa Arteaga and I'm here with Molly Singer and Rachel Eiberg. We're at the Discovery Center at the Conservancy of Southwest Florida and we're about to meet with the naturalist who's going to give us some more information on the lionfish display. I'm here with Jennifer Bobka from the Education Department of the Conservancy of the Southwest Florida. She's going to answer a few questions for us regarding our lionfish problem. Jennifer, how has the Conservancy been addressing the lionfish problem? Well, we really tackle it through the angle of education. So we have a lionfish on display here, and we acquired this fish um, from a pet store. A lot of pet stores will acquire them from the wild. So we have our fish on display um, to be used for education purposes. So members of the public come in to our Discovery Center, and we use him as an educational tool to teach people about the detriments of invasive species, of lionfish in particular, and what efforts are being done to try to control the problem. Is fixing the problem an important concern for the Conservancy? Absolutely. Invasive Florida is the number two invasive species capital of the world, so it's a really big problem, and that's a big issue that we focus on here at the Conservancy. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up this interview? If you would like to know more about the lionfish or other invasive species, you can come visit us here at the Conservancy. <laughs> okay, well that's Jennifer with the lionfish exhibit. <laughs> Brian Fleck, the Collier County Extension Director and Florida Sea Grant Extension Agent, has taken measures to advocate this invasive dilemma. We asked Mr. Fleck his views on the issue. I think at the local level, there's there's been because there's been a lot more uh, awareness and efforts to try to tell. Um, I think the, the rodeos, the, the spearfishing tournaments. I think you have some success at the local level. I don't know if there's a magic number where they're ever going to say we're happy with with it, but um, I think there are long-term management goals to get their get their you know the sightings of them down to a point where we know that minimizes the impacts to our natural ecosystems. Because this problem is widely unknown. These various groups and organizations have made it easy for the public to help address the issue. The Florida Wildlife Commission has created an app for users to download in order to report sightings and learn more information on the invasive species. Other organizations have the option to report lionfish through an online report. For more information on lionfish and their invasion in Southwest Florida and beyond, go to the Lionfish Portal, Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, N-O-A-A. -A. Thank you to all who made this documentary possible.